Well, um, it should come as no surprise that um, the compiler deals with non-static uh, member classes by carrying out some transformations. And uh, this is what it does. Uh, first thing it does is um, extract the classes from where they are and it changes the name to use the um, dollar form just as they were for static uh, member classes. Now um, uh, private fields and uh, methods of course generate um, access methods um, yeah, as if they're used outside the class um, just like um, static member classes but um, it applies to instance methods in fields as well as static methods in fields. Uh, next the um, non-static member class constructors have a reference to the immediate the enclosing class instance inserted as the first parameter and um, uh, within the enclosing uh, class class um, a call to um, uh, the inner class constructor is uh, gets transformed into um, uh, a call that looks like that so uh, that form of call is transformed to that where it, uh, this is being used and it's for this reason of course that you can't instantiate a a non-static member class from a static method in the enclosing class of course because that's why the compiler complains at the use of this because it transforms that into that which uses this and so that's why it complains now that um, that parameter that's passed in of course um, is stored by the uh, non-static member class constructor in a final instance field and uh, whenever an inner method accesses an instance field or a non-static method from the enclosing class it obtains it using the stored parameter okay using that, that stored parameter now uh, the name for the parameter is um, this dollar n where n is, is some integer now um, a reference to the top level class instance is um, called this dollar zero and this dollar one would refer to an inner class immediately nested in it and, and so on all the way down so for example um, if you've got a very deeply nested class um, you, you find uh, to get a field in the in the um, top level class you'd have to do something like this say uh, this dollar three that will get you to the next the next enclosing instance up. Uh, this dollar one will get you to the next one. Uh, to, uh, this dollar two, rather. Uh, this dollar one will get you to the next one up, and so on, right the way up to this dollar zero, which will get you to the top level class. And then you can just do dot field to pick the um, instance field up from the top level class. And, and that's the technique it, that's, that's used. So uh, let's go and have a look at an example. Uh, this is an example to show you what happens with uh, non-static member classes. What we've got here is the um, outer class and um, inside it's got uh, that inner class there. And uh, there's a few variables here, i, j, k, l, uh, m and n are methods. And uh, a couple of calls to the uh, construct various types of inner class there and there. And uh, inside this inner class um, We've got uh, this method test here, which uh, accesses i, j, k, and l, and m and n. And there's a various the uh, private or not private, in static or not static, depending. Okay, so how does that get uh, translated? Well, um, first of all, the uh, inner class here gets pulled out, and with a dollar inserted in between, and uh, and we get this extra variable here which is a uh, reference to outer it's final outer and it's uh, this dollar zero because it's uh, the first level of nesting and uh, is the constructor that's the first constructor there which um, because it's a, a non-static um, inner class it's going to take this extra parameter here the reference to outer 
which it uh, simply passes on to uh, to the uh, uh, the next constructor, just as that does, uh, with uh, 87 in it, and uh, this is what the next constructor does. It um, first thing it does is it stores um, that parameter in uh, this dollar zero there. So now it's got a reference to the outer class or an outer class instance, uh, and then it calls super. And uh, then it does the um, a bit of a assignment there. So uh, you'll notice that this um, this dollar zero is set first even before the call to super. And as a result of that, if you try and write that, of course, it's not going to compile because you'll insist that the first thing in a constructor is either a call to this or a call to super. However, of course, it's the compiler that makes these rules up, and it's the compiler that can break them. And this is an example of what it does. It breaks that rule, but uh, it can do that because it's the compiler. And uh, now if we have a look at this uh, uh, method test here, the first thing it does is it, uh, it's going to have to get i. And um, if you look at... Uh, what I is, it's a um, instance, private instance field, so we're going to need an access method. And uh, what's more, that access method is going to have to take a reference to outer. And of course, the reference it's going to use is this dollar zero, which is the appropriate one. And uh, of course, it just simply returns the i, the relevant i there. Um, what are we doing? j. j is. Uh, Again, uh, private, so we're going to need access method, but this time it's static, so we don't need an instance of the outer class. And if you look at the next thing, which is uh, 100, of course that uh, doesn't take an instance of the outer class, and it simply returns J. Um, K is uh, static, and uh, it's a pretty straightforward K, so you can easily get it that one from this class. So you just do that. And uh, L is a, an instance variable, so you're going to need an instance of the outer class, but it's not private, so you can do it directly from this class. So you just do this dollar zero dot L. That's how you get that. And um, a call to M is obviously M being an instance uh, method, it's going to need an instance of the outer class. And uh, so that's what gets passed in. And 200 simply uses that and calls M like that. And uh, the last one, N, uh, it being private again, is going to need an access method. And uh, because it's a static method here, you don't need an instance of the outer class. So you don't need to pass a parameter into it. So it's simply N like that. Now these um, constructors, let's have a look the first constructor here, um, in making 42, obviously that's going to have to be modified to take this 42, like that. And mk in 1 there is going to pass in i there. So we're going to need this in first and then i, like that. So the after this always goes in first, and um, yeah, that's about it. I think that's all I want to say.